Hi! This is my reading vlog for the Queer Blackathon that was held on Juneteenth. It was hosted by a number of booktubers whose names I forget at the moment. Their channels are all linked down below if you want to check out their amazing channels. But the Queer Blackathon was all about reading books by and about queer black people. And for the readathon, I chose to read Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I didn't actually finish the book in the 48 hour time period. I know there were some people who managed to read like crazy numbers of books. I managed to get through half of this book, which is why this video is coming out a bit later than everybody else's videos, uh, as I wanted to be able to discuss this book properly rather than half ass it. I loved this book, and the only reason it hasn't been catapulted to one of my all-time favourites is because it doesn't have any sci-fi or fantasy element to it. The book is so British that in some places it actually made me laugh out loud from surprise at the accuracy of some of the representations of the people. Especially the viewpoints that were set in London, as I lived in London for several years, and Many of the little details that were mentioned, I actually lived them, which was so strange to be able to relate to a novel, not just in terms of like general character traits, but in specific moments that Everisto mentions, like the Hare Krishnas on Oxford Street or the giant top shop on Regent Street. It's like, those were parts of my everyday life and it was like a a weird slap in the face to be like, hey, those are real places. Those are real places that I've been to and they're real places in this book. That doesn't usually happen to me. It was weird. I got excited. But what I found was most interesting about this book for me was the contrast between the familiarity and the completely different. As almost all the characters are black and it was so interesting but also so heartbreaking to read them traveling through such familiar landscapes for me but with such a different experience of that landscape. The racism and the sexism that they had to endure are almost unimaginable to me as a straight white cis woman. But the worst bit was knowing that none of these experiences are special or unique. All of this hap- that everything that happens in this book happens all the time. Which is why all the Black Lives Matter protests that sprung up recently all over the world happen so quickly. Because all the hurt and the injustice and everything, it was already there. And it just needed a catalyst to bring all the protests together. The book is written almost like a long poem, where the sentence structure is formatted on different lines according to the importance of the word or the phrase. Full stops and capital letters are also used or not used freely. You'll start a whole new chapter and the sentence doesn't have a capital letter or you'll end a section and there's no full stop. So the whole thing flows. And even though the book was told from 12 different viewpoints, because of these small details, it felt to me like the whole story flowed together like one beautiful entity. Each voice was consistently unique because they weren't just characters. Everisto basically transcribed real people onto a page. Even when the characters had a similar background or were a similar age, they all spoke with their own idiosyncrasies and their own method of storytelling. They were so clear I could hear the accents. Normally I have trouble hearing accents but when I was reading some of these characters, they just told me what their accent was and I knew exactly who I was talking to and who they were. Even when Evaristo wrote about people with contentious viewpoints that are different from my own, she still made them human and really made me care about all of them. Every single one had dreams and insecurities that I found so relatable. Even though we only spend a small amount of time with each character, I really felt like the whole book was just me in conversation with that person or whoever it was who had a chapter at the time. The book is kind of educational 
and teaches you a little bit about feminist issues and about race issues. But the way that every stone merges that together with the story, it's almost like fact and fiction are blending together. And those topics, when they're combined with the insecurities of the characters, it helped me to understand the issues on a personal level. So I could understand the stereotypes that certain people continue and how that damages the people they're stereotyping. And viewing these issues from a personal lens really helped those moments where Evaristo gets a little bit more into her teaching mode. It stopped them being preachy and and kept everything about the characters. And a lot of the discussions and the problems that were discussed in the book, I found they really represent the conversations and the problems that are happening in the UK at the moment, particularly Yaz and the opinions she had about the older generation and how they've just ruined everything. It was a very naive discussion on her part but I can see so many young British people talking about exactly the same problem. I really loved this book. It was a slow read for me, but it was slow because it made me think and it was so thoughtful and it introduced me to new characters or new experiences that I'd never considered before and I've never had to experience myself before. So I really loved that and I hope that even with the controversy with the whole Man Booker Prize and the way that this book was catapulted to popularity, that it brings it to the attention of some people in the, especially in the British reading community, who potentially wouldn't have picked up a book like this otherwise. And I hope that the Queer Blackathon effort has, has introduced you to books that you might not have thought about picking up. Thank you for watching me reading a book. I'll speak to you next time.